Listener discretion is advised. I know why these are better. This is me. Vendetta. Angry, aggressive, loud, even scary. These are just a few words that may initially come to mind after hearing something like that. What you have just heard is a compilation of several songs in the metalcore genre, which has been making a huge comeback thanks to several up-and-coming bands. Despite this comeback, this form of music is often seen as menacing and negative. The aggressive sounds, lyrical themes, and vocals can be off-putting to many listeners. On the opposite side of the spectrum, there are many fans who enjoy this form of music and see it as a positive force. Whether they find release from struggles of everyday life, cathartically moshing around and shouting along to the music, or they find a support system of like-minded individuals who understand their feelings and belief, this heavy music is not always as evil as it may initially appear to be. My name is Darren Weber, and in the next 60 minutes, I will be your host as we take a closer look at some of the bands in the metalcore genre, listening to their songs, reading their lyrics, and gaining insights from members of the bands to examine the positive side of a genre with many negative connotations. The name metalcore, aka metallic hardcore, comes from the fusion of two genres, metal and hardcore punk. The genre is known for its blend of breakdowns, downtuned riffs, screaming, growling, roaring vocals, and occasional singing. The genre is well known for music that is conductive to moshing and slam dancing. As previously mentioned, there are several bands who are reinventing the genre, tracing back the hardcore roots and adding their own styles of breakdowns, gang vocals, and beatdown riffs. You previously heard some of these bands in our intro track. There are countless others within the genre, three of which we'll be listening and talking to. Our first band is alternative metalcore outfit Bloodline from Texas. Bloodline released their first EP, Three, in 2015. Since then, the band has been featured on several nationwide tours. Their debut full-length album, Insolent, was released in 2018. The band continues to write and record new music, tour, and are set to release another full-length album. Here's the song Lifeless off their most recent release.
Now that you've listened and experienced a full song within the genre, let's take a closer look at the lyrics. The song begins with the line, life taken at such a young age. The rest of the verse describes the feeling and experience of witnessing the loss of someone who died too soon. Noted by the lines, we were too scared to look, afraid of what came next and crippled by the fear of loss. I lost it all the moment I saw your lifeless face. I'll carry that image all the way to my grave, the way you look so cold in my arms. The chorus is a plea for the changing of the guard, soaked in guilt and remorse as the vocalist cries, should have taken me instead, it's running through my head, it's always running through my head, it should have been me instead, wish I could pray it away, was it worth the lesson, I couldn't force you to stay, while your ghost will remain, is it worth the lesson. The next verse describes the process of laying someone to rest. Noted by the lines, we held ourselves together and left it up to faith, fooled ourselves into thinking we had what it takes, to fight the urge to break when we marched you to your grave. With just a moment to process the pain, you were gone. No resurrection, lifeless. The chorus is repeated and the song ends. This is clearly a very devastating and tough subject. The song, however, does not have to be taken negatively. It is therapy for the band, especially the member who experienced this tragedy. The sound is aggressive, but if anyone has experienced losing someone, they may understand the feeling of wanting to scream. This song lends itself to those who have experienced the same thing and can, potentially, provide support. This may be just my take on it, however, I did have the privilege of sitting down to talk on the phone with Bloodlines vocalist Joseph Todd to discuss the meaning of the song and the band's music. Here is an excerpt from that interview. In your own words, what is the meaning of Lifeless? Uh, I wrote that song about my little brother, actually. Uh, He died of hypoplastic right heart syndrome, which is like when they're still in the womb, basically their heart just doesn't develop the right way so like the left side is really small but the right side is really big so it just doesn't pump blood the way it's supposed to correctly um and this happened like you know a long time ago maybe about 15 years ago now and um it's just kind of something that i've wanted to write about for a long time something i've tried to write about before and just didn't like come through correctly with other projects or whatever so whenever matt and titus sent me the instrumental for uh, Lifeless, I think we were like about halfway through the writing process for Insolent and I like was just kind of honestly having some trouble like finding some subjects that I really like felt strongly about and then they sent me the instrumental and it was just like instant really like I just kind of knew as soon as I heard it like what the song needed to be and all that so I just kind of wanted to almost like close the chat not close the chapter really but like have a song that kind of showed my feelings about it and was able to kind of like give myself some closure while at the same time like kind of telling my story and my brother's story. How did writing that song and and being able to record it and play it live, how did that help you process through the pain? Writing it was, uh, I feel like writing it was definitely more of a, I guess like a personal experience 
experience, so to speak, of like just like putting, you know, putting the words down to the paper and then actually recording the song and getting to produce it and just like seeing the seeing like what's bouncing around inside my head kind of like come to fruition was able to help me just kind of like I guess just kind of it's just like coming to terms with reality really it's like you can't really be upset over the things that like you can't change but it doesn't mean it still sucks so it was just kind of like uh like once you put it out there put it out loud it just kind of like makes it more real and kind of come to terms with the fact that like you can't change it and all that that was probably like the the best like experience out of it how do you think that this song is positive and how can it help those who are listening to it Ooh, that's a good question i'd say i'd say it's positive in the sense of like uh one of the main things uh that i talk about in the song uh comes in the second verse you know the, the the line is i tried to keep it together for our family's sake but i lost it all when i saw your lifeless face so like with that it's like even though it is kind of like a more of like a bummer type line like to me that has some positivity in it because it's like even when just for me personally it's kind of like in a way almost like a manifesto of like yeah like even when when stuff sucks like i kind of have always felt like i'm the one that holds it down and like kind of keeps a level head so I, I feel like the positive message in that to other people would be that that like even even when stuff is going down like like i don't know like you ever heard like the term like heroes are born through adversity or something like that absolutely yeah. or like it's kind of like that same same message of like being how we handle adversity and go through these difficult times and how we're able to come through it and be at the end of it is really going to speak to our character and and kind of just show the world who we really are. So going off of that, what do you hope that in general listeners take away from your band and the music? Man, I hope if, if I had to boil it down to one thing, I, I hope that people could listen to Bloodline and listen to the lyrics and stuff and just come out of it with that mentality of like, even when, even when shit hits the fan, like I can still hold it down and I can still be the person that I need to be, you know, or, man or woman like it doesn't matter like whoever you are listening to it whatever like struggle you're going through like it's such a corny like cliche thing to say like you know like you're gonna make it through it i feel like when people generally say when people say like oh you know you'll make it through it or things will get better like it's not they're not really they're just saying like oh you just kind of have to like fight through it and at the end you're gonna feel better but it's not ever like a you're gonna feel better thing and you should never want to feel like completely better in my opinion because to me that insinuates forgetting about the things that have happened which means you aren't learning from them so I, I guess i would just hope that people could listen to bloodline and be able to use that as a motivator to take their tough times and whatnot as learning experiences versus letting it pull them all the way down uh, I remember when Insulin was released and you guys kind of opened up a question and answer on Twitter. I asked you guys about like your influences, not only with uh, the, the album itself, but the overall band. And you had some pretty, I don't know who I was talking to at the time, but you had some pretty interesting um, answers. I know you said like Slipknot and, you know, things that you would expect. But then you also said like Skillet and Thousand Foot Crutch, who are Christian rock bands with like pretty positive messages. Do you think that those influenced <laughs> yeah. your uh, songwriting a bit? Absolutely, man. It's it's crazy. Um, so me, Titus, and Matt all grew up going to church, like, hardcore. Like, all of us were, except for Jake. I think Jake was the only one that has, like, not really been a church guy. But growing up, like, Titus and I and Matt were involved with, you know, youth group bands and writing for our worship bands and stuff like that. And, uh, like, the first show, literally the first show I ever went to, first live concert, was I went to go see Skillet at this uh, festival called Celebrating Freedom. Like after that, like first one of the first heavy bands I got into, what I would consider a heavy band would be like Thousand Foot Crutch. You know, tons of alternative, like contemporary Christian metal. Um, and that was, you know, when we were a lot younger. As we've grown up, our our worldview has changed quite a bit. To be honest, um, all of us. But regardless of our change of worldview, that music. I mean, I still listen to Christian music, even though that's not really my style anymore just because the music is so good at the end of the day like i may not agree with like the lyrics and stuff that they're saying but the emotion is still there and the songwriting is still there and yeah i mean i think for a lot of people involved in the i don't know i don't want to like call it screamo but it is what it is you know like heavier no, yeah. screaming type music if you think about all the bands that were super influential not even that long ago you know five years ago five to ten years ago they were all on the, you know, solid state records, tooth and nail records. You'll get Under Rose, Demon Hunter, Impending Doom, like any of these heavy bands that really like formed how the metalcore and heavy music scene is right now and the way bands sound all kind of came from that Christian side of things. So for me, it's just something that was always around and all that. And it's just, you know, just by listening to it has had its effect on the music that we write. 
You can listen to the entire interview on YouTube, which features more discussions and information on the band's future and music. As you heard, there is quite a bit of positivity within this genre of music, more than meets the eye, or ears if you will. We are, however, just getting started. Our next band hails from Massachusetts. Degrader is a metalcore band with quite a lot to say in their music. They recently signed with Stay Sick Recordings and have an EP released titled From the Inside Out and a debut full-length album on the way. Every song on their EP focuses on a relatable struggle that everyone may face in their lives, from heartbreak to dealing with hypocritical people. There's also a song called Gaslighter that recounts a personal experience of dealing with gaslighting, something that is rarely talked about outside the field of psychology. We're going to listen and take a closer look at two songs off the band's EP. The first is called Gaia. Loud, angry, but with a purpose. Some may not be aware, but the song's title, Gaia, refers to the personification of Earth in Greek mythology, and is one of the primordial deities, according to the Greeks. This knowledge lends itself greatly to the meaning of the song, as well as the lyrics, which begins with the line, Self-appointed disappointment in a race of parasitic humans. We are not alone on this Earth, but we use and abuse until there's nothing left but dirt. If you take a moment to listen closely, you can almost hear all the conservatives shouting, Amen! Hallelujah! Clearly, Degrader feels strongly about environmental protection, and their use of screams and heavy music serve as an auditory example of how fed up they are with how we treat our planet. The message does not stop there, however. Degrader has brought the Greek deity into this one to help make their point. Here's the chorus of the song. Gaia screams, someone save me. Repeated twice for extra emphasis. The band goes on to give examples of what will come of our continual waste in the remaining lyrics of the song. You just don't understand that we can't keep going down this route. Soon enough there will be no water to drink, soon enough there will be no air to breathe. The chorus is repeated and the song ends with a call to action. A dying earth, know what it's worth. We're not the only life on this planet. Recognize we need to undo all this damage. It's time you were held accountable for every single thing you've done. You may be safe from the others, just know that I am your degrader. <laughs> Boom. Mic drop. Are they angry? Yes they are. Do they have a right to be? Absolutely. There is nothing but truth spoken in these lines. The music is aggressive, but it's all out of passion for what the band wants to get across to their listeners. 
Haven't you ever felt the need to yell in order to be heard and wake people up to realize the things they are doing wrong? Of course you have. We all have. Just don't take my word for all this, though. Here's an excerpt from a phone interview I conducted with the Graders vocalist Liam Geary about the song. So the first song, Gaia, I think this song is self-explanatory in its meaning, but it is always better to get the band's personal take on the meaning of their songs. Uh, in your own words, what is Gaia about? Well, uh, when we originally put out Gaia, you know, it was the first um, single that we put out after um, a couple member changes. And, um, you know, everything that we had written up to that point had kind of just been like, you know, like an angry FU type of vibe with not a lot of substance to it. So when we went to, you know, do that record, we decided, you know, let's start saying something that has a little more context to it, something that people can get behind. And I mean, if you just take a look around the world, you know, you can see that pollution um, is at an all time high and our planet is just, you know, literally dying. And, and that's something that everybody can identify with. Like, it doesn't matter who you are, or where you come from, like, this applies to everyone. So, you know, almost kind of like a blanket statement that we can make that, if we're not, you know, taking our own actions seriously, then we're going to be paying repercussions very soon. And it's kind of up to us and up to the individual to, you know, spark that inspiration to get people behind a movement that, you know, makes people more aware of, of how they're acting and, and what steps that they can take to minimize their carbon footprint and, and you know, get back on the right track to having like a healthy, you know, ecosystem having a healthy earth and, and not like, you know, basically just damning us all to hell by, by being ignorant and, and not giving a care towards things like that. So that was like the first thing that we felt, you know, would be a good topic to cover in regards to putting more substance and context to our music rather than just being like, Hey, I'm angry and I hate you. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's one of the things that people don't, that's what I'm trying to prove with this project exactly is that, you know, just because you're heavy and just because you're angry doesn't mean you have to be like F you. You can do something positive with that. I mean, you're you're yelling and you're raising your voice, so you might as well be yelling about something. I think uh, often when, like, vocalists get, or just members of bands, when they get interviewed about things like this, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of them want to, you know, hash it up and be like, oh, well, we're really not, it's really not angry. But even, even though, you know, I would make the argument that that it is angry, but these are the things that are worth being angry about. And it's important to have these kind of things exist like this type of, even though in a, in a sense it is negative energy, it's important to have it available because there's nowhere else that you can healthily get that out of your system. And there's no, there's no other place where it's okay or, or no other time where it's okay for you to be angry and to yell about these things. And so, you know, maybe on the surface it might look like, you know, oh, we're just yelling, we're just, we're just angry, but it's what, what are we angry about? What are we yelling about? You know, what, what's being addressed here that people aren't looking at? What's the bigger picture going on here? Why are, why are we angry? Why are we yelling? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, how do you believe that this song is a positive song? Um, I think it's positive because... You know, like I'm saying, just heavy music in general, it gets people's attention in a sense. And people that want to dive deeper into the meanings, there's, it's usually there. Like there's always, there's always like that face value that, you know, I show someone uh, one of our songs for the first time. They're not looking for the underlying meaning. They're kind of just, you know, seeing it, feeling it for the first time. And, and that, you know, initial reaction is going to be one of like rage, of outrage, one that's going to get people going and get people motivated, get them to get something out of them. And then after that subsides, then you have the context to look behind. And there's a there's always a message within any artist's music. And with heavy music, you're able to explore, you know, some hot topics and some no zones that other genres of music don't really tap into all that often. Like, I mean, we have a song called um, Gaslighter and that, ta uh, that touches on, you know, domestic violence and gaslighting people and, and abuse and things like that. And you're not going to hear a rap artist, a pop artist, a country artist talk about things like that because, I mean, to be quite blunt, no one wants to have to talk about that. So that's why I take it upon myself to force out that conversation to force it into my lyrics, to force people to 
to wake up to these things because they are a reality, even though we want to ignore it. And people are mostly interested in listening to music that's about, you know, getting wasted and partying and stuff. That doesn't make these issues uh, invisible to the world. And it's important for someone to be the person to start the conversation. And I think that's probably the most positive thing that you can get out of metal is it really does start that dialogue. It forces us to talk about these hard issues to discuss, you know, racism, abuse, um, you know, the planet. I could go on. There's a ton of different things that just like sometimes just go overlooked or we don't think about them unless it's thrown right in front of your face. And what a better way to get it in someone's face than, you know, literally screaming at the top of your lungs like, yo, wake up. This is here and it's a real thing and we need to talk about it. There you have it, straight from the vocalist of the band himself. The next Degrader song comes off the same EP and deals with a heavy topic similar to Bloodline's Lifeless. This is Phantom Pain off Degrader's From the Inside Out. The term, phantom pain, refers to a medical condition that some amputees experience when they feel pain coming from a limb that is no longer there. In terms of the Degrader song, however, the band is referring to the pain that follows the loss of a loved one. Once again, similar to Lifeless by Bloodline. The difference with this song by Degrader lies in the expression of determination to move on and make the loved one proud. This meaning can be derived from the lyrics, But I have learned to face my fears, there is nothing that can stop me now. The next few lines reinforce this newfound strength. The ghosts of the past are watching me become who I'm meant to be, peer through the glass and break me free from this agony. No, I will not be buried by the sands of time. I can never fail with your spirit by my side. As you can hear, there is a contrast in attitude between Lifeless by Bloodline and Phantom Pain by Degrader. 
but both songs are positive in their own respects. They both serve to lend support to listeners who have experienced similar tragedies and raise awareness to how differently people deal with the loss. Some can feel remorse and guilt, like lifeless, and some may feel a need to persevere to continue bettering themselves, like phantom pain. The lyrical positivity increases even more as the song comes to an end with the lines, There is a light. There is a light at the end of the road. In my darkest hour, I still find hope. I'll keep the faith until my moment comes. This phantom pain leaves my soul feeling numb. I swore to you I would never give in, as I threw your ashes to the wind. Degrader's Liam Geary was kind enough to share the experience of writing this song as well as its meaning as a part of the phone interview you previously heard. Here's an excerpt from that interview. So the second song we're talking about um, is Phantom Pain, and that's another song that's really heavy, but not just in sound and lyrics as well. What is Phantom Pain about? So um, Phantom Pain is probably one of the most personal songs I've ever written. Um, my grandfather passed away um, a couple of years ago, and I wrote Phantom Pain uh, just a few short months after that went down. And my grandfather kind of replaced my father in my life. My father wasn't didn't really play a major role, so my grandfather, you know, kind of filled that void. And when he passed away, it was, it was just a challenge that I, I had never faced in my life and, and I wasn't prepared for. But it kind of just, uh, I wanted to write in a way that would like honor the lessons that I had learned, even though, you know, I might not be able to talk to him anymore. Or I might not be able to ask for advice. There's still things that he left me with that I'll never forget, and I'll be able to carry that on with with me throughout the rest of my life. And, you know, the overall message of the song is is when someone passes away, you know, you never really do get over it. You never truly recover. You just adapt. But it's important to adapt, and it's important to not let, you know, the challenge overcome you, and it's important to not succumb to the hard parts of the challenge because there are there's definitely days you know even now you know years since he's passed away where I wish I could give him a phone call or I wish I could tell him about you know something that the band just got done and I mean obviously I can't but what I can do is I can look back on the memories that we have and I know that you know if I were able to tell him about what's going on he would be super proud of me and uh so yeah the overall message is is to just, you know, keep your faith and, and to keep moving along because that's what, you know, our loved ones who pass away, that's what they would want us to do. They they don't want us to sit here and, and dwell over them forever. They probably want us to miss them, but not in a sense that's debilitating and prevents us from living our lives. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so that's that's a super hard thing for people to just talk about, not never mind writing a song and recording it. What was that process like for you? I feel that as an artist, I've always been the type of person to, you know, kind of wear my heart on my sleeve. And I think it's important because not a lot of people do do that. And it's important to be able to go out into this world, whether it's through our art or through communications or friendships or relationships. It's important that we have people that we can identify our struggles with theirs because everybody that we know, you know, or don't know everybody's going through something and writing this that one song in particular was like almost like an assignment to myself where I was kind of like I kind of came to this realization in in the lowest of that low of that challenge that I faced when my grandfather passed away I came to this realization where I was like I'm not the only one who has felt this way about this or about anything else and I can't even imagine how awful it would have felt to go through that without the support of like my friends and family and people that could identify with my struggle and, and the challenge that I was facing. And I thought, you know, there probably are people that are going through similar things and, and they feel like they have no one to turn to and no one to talk to. And, and that's where music comes in for me for a lot of things in my life where you know, I, I feel like there's no one else that's going to be able to relate to me. But then I hear this song and, you know, whatever song it is, and, and it talks about the problem that I'm having or whether it's directly or indirectly, because one of the beauties about music is I might write a song and it could mean a very specific thing to me, but the way I write it 
anybody can listen to it and it can mean something completely different to them. And as long as I'm able to, you know, connect to at least one person and someone hears one of my songs and, and, and they feel something, whether they feel, you know, they feel sad, they feel happy. I think it's important to get those emotions out and to connect with the fans between the artists. And I feel like, you know, so many heavy bands, you know, it, for sure, there's a reason, you know, that there's the stigma against heavy metal because there's a ton of artists that all they write about is, is you know, just brutal things, you know, topics that I'm really not interested in at all, violence and, and death and suicide and, well, suicide in a different sense, not like an intellectual sense, but just like, you know, like general topics that like what make people talk about heavy music the way they do. Yeah. And I just kind of felt like there's enough of that already. And I don't want to be that type of artist. I want to be someone that people can relate to. And I want people to like feel something from my music, whether it's good or bad. I want people to like hear my music and listen to my lyrics and, and, and be like, wow, he's, he's really like saying something here. And this was not a waste of my time. I want to one last time, just turn the mic over to you. You have, however long you need or want to say whatever you want to. Yo, I think the most important thing that I can say is mental health is important and it's important to not ignore your own mental health as well as the mental health amongst, you know, your friends and family. Be sure to check in on people. You never know what's going on in someone's life until you ask. And even if someone doesn't want to open up right away, leave that door open, leave that option there because you never know when someone's going to need to turn to you. And if you're the type of person that feels like you don't have anybody to turn to, don't be a stranger. We can be friends. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Hit the band up on Instagram. Um, there's always someone that's willing to listen to you. And there's always a way to overcome the challenges in your life and to turn something negative into something positive. You can hear the rest of the interview on YouTube, in which I recount my first time seeing Degrader, how the band feels about signing to their new record label, what their plans are for new music, and when and where you can see them live. We're coming to the end of our exploration, but before we do, there is one more up-and-coming band who are not afraid to get loud and promote their own brand of music and positivity. Set Sights is a band from California. Their unique blend of heavy music and hip-hop make them an interesting band to listen to. They release their debut full-length album, The Heavy Alternative, via Tragic Hero Records in 2018, and have been constantly touring the country to promote their brand of music and beliefs. The band was gracious enough to allow us to listen to and examine two songs off of their full-length release. The first is Rise Above, an anthemic and catchy song that is the audio equivalent to that first cup of morning coffee.
How Could I See a Jaded Life Was the One I Chose for Me, contemplates vocalist Mauro Abdelmola in the first line of the chorus. The entire song explores the internal thoughts of the vocalist, thoughts that are not all that unfamiliar with those that I and many others have experienced when it comes to facing a crossroads or taking a moment to reflect and, perhaps, realize that you're not content with what you have done in the moment or your overall life. If you are not quite sure if you can relate just yet, let's take a closer look at the lyrics for the rest of the song. The opening line is similar to that of the chorus. It begins with the question, am I content living with a selfishness? This question sets the precedent for what is to come in the following verses and choruses as the singer continues examining his life and coming to terms with where he is and where he wants to be. We get a personal one-on-one -on -one look at a man going through a crisis and giving himself a, a pep talk. But is he only talking to himself, or could he be speaking to everyone who has felt this way? The rest of the first verse continues with, I can't tell myself that it's alright, but I couldn't see delirium encompass me. Let the skin shed from my mind to show all I can be. That final line in the first verse segues into that overarching question in the chorus. How could I see a jaded life was the one I chose for me? I want to be setting standards of what is right for me, but how could I see the past brings back everything that haunts me? I want to be a better man the, than the one I used to be. Are you relating to this yet? A person dealing with his own inner frustrations, realizing the mistakes that have been made, as well as where he wants to be. We all strive to be better, and this song lets us in on, that, on a relatable and personal struggle to become better than the person we once were. The second verse exemplifies the singer continuing to come to terms with his life. The true colors show, the spectrum broke when the truth was told. A waste of mind is a waste of time. The snake in the grass hatched from my mind. I said I can give this up. The quote, a waste of mind is a waste of time, cannot be found on the internet. It is perhaps something a friend or relative said to the singer, or it is something the singer came up with himself. Either way, there is a definite truth within it. More on that soon. The chorus is repeated and the song ends with one final question. Can I give this up? Rise above. As I have said over and over so far, this is a very relatable song about the inner turmoil one can face regarding his or her life. The song goes just a little bit further than giving the listener something to relate to, since there is some advice given at the end, which is, rise above. We all can and we all should always try to. I was fortunate enough to talk to Setside's vocalist Mauro about the meaning of the song, why it's important to strive to be better and rise above, as well as the meaning and source of the quote in the second verse. Here's an excerpt from that interview. Rise Above is one of the singles from your debut release, The Heavy Alternative, and for good reason. There's a very positive and empowering song that, that looks at someone struggling with his life and realizing that he's, he's not where he wants to be, but he knows where he went wrong and where he wants to go from there. What is the true story behind the song? So Rise Above is, is really about, like, it's about wanting self-improvement through self-reflection. It's about kind of, like, learning from your mistakes, you know what I mean? And not letting those mistakes paint the picture of who you are. Having that conscious kind of decision to, you know, be better, be that, be the exact, be the change you want the world kind of thing. That that song is is just that man. It's just like, you know, people talk about, oh, like I got to start doing this. I got to do this better. I, I can't be doing this all the time. And rise above is just about like, I can like, I can talk all I want, but it's about actually doing it. So. You know, I got to really just implement these ideas of positivity and, you know, living a just overall in general, like more positive life rather than sulking in the negativity and like, you know, soaking yourself in it daily. Like that's just like acidic to your body. You know what I mean? Especially if like, you know, you you have like past mistakes that haunt you. You know what I mean? Like it can be really, really difficult to try and try and like become that better version of yourself. There is a quote in the second verse that I really enjoy and it's uh, a waste of mind is a waste of time. What does that mean and where did it come from? It actually came directly um, oh, a half heart song. <laughs> um, a waste of mind. It, it, the, the original quote is a wasted mind is a waste of time. It's a, you know, half heart was a straight edge band. So I kind of played it played the words a little bit around and, and kind of brought it to this perspective of living righteously, not just from abstaining from alcohol and all the things that, um, you know, all the, the very positive choices that uh, people in the straight edge community make, like it, it's beyond that. It's like you have a mind, 
that is the most powerful weapon on the face of the planet. You know what I mean? Like our, our brains are like nuclear reactors in our heads, like just filled with electricity and ideas and imagination. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, if you want to just waste your life, which I, you know, everyone has their own definitions of what, what wasting your life is. But if me, if like you don't waste your time and your life just on um, bringing others down and, you know, living selfishly, if you're going to live your life wastefully, that's just a waste of the 80 years that you have here. It's a waste of your life. You know what I mean? Like, because in reality, we don't know if there's a heaven and an earth. We don't, or sorry, heaven and a hell. We don't know if there's a, if, if there's anything after this life. So, you know, might as well just try to make it the best and the most, make the most powerful impact you can make, whether that's, you know, on a global scale or just like in your own family. You know what I mean? Just. I absolutely agree. There's uh, one thing that I want to go back to real quick that you mentioned that I uh, find very important in my life, and that was the whole um, talking about reflection and taking a moment to really do some reflection and think about how you're living your life and the words that you're saying and, and how that's you know affecting yourself and those around you. Why do you think that that's so important? Like, what does that do for you? First of all, it helped me stop being such an asshole. Right. <laughs> um, you know, man, like, I'm not blaming, like, my prior actions on anyone but myself kind of thing and that's because of that reflection and you know in today's world you have yeah everyone pointing the finger at this is the reason of this and uh, this is why i'm acting like this and in reality you know what i mean despite re anything like obviously you know minus or minus the um, obvious cases where some people just you know like have a, a problem you know mm -hmm. um but in all reality like at least in my reality i should say all my actions is just because because of myself. I don't care if I was high. I don't care if I was like intoxicated in any way. I, if I like, I really come to learn like all the bad I've done is because of me, solely because of me. You know what I mean? And if I didn't have that time to reflect, I couldn't better myself. What where I was at when I, those actions were made, whatever they may be. And I'm not talking about any specific thing. I'm talking about like just my 23 years of living on Earth. You know what I mean? Just like any, you know, anything I felt guilty for, anything I've, you know, had, you know, negative feelings in general towards, you know, like, it's just that, that taking a step back and just kind of looking at the bigger picture. Reflection really makes you see where you've gone wrong and where you can, like, kind of tune that and, and make sure you can, like, stay on the path that you're trying to walk without veering off again, you know? Set Sight's debut release is full of incredible material. Rise Above is just the beginning of what the band stands for and the messages they seek to convey. Rise Above segues into the song Violent Words. Coincidentally enough, this is the second song on the album, as well as the second song that we will be listening to, analyzing, and discussing with the band. The overall tone of this song is a little more somber than that of Rise Above. However, there is still a very strong message to be heard and felt throughout the song. It is a song that centers on similar themes of reflection, introspection, and taking a deeper look within to accept coming to terms, but never giving in. Let's give it a spin.
In a way, I feel like the song is an auditory experience of someone venturing out of a dark tunnel into the light. It is a, a journey that ends with a triumphant conclusion. You can hear this as much in the melodies as in the words themselves. Let's take a closer look at the lyrics. I want to dig through the depths of my mind. I was searching for answers of what I've already known. I've accepted the storm would swallow me whole. Right off the bat, we're seeing or hearing a familiar theme of a person reflecting on his life and mindset in order to progress and come to realizations. There's an embrace of the negativity or the storm, but there's also more to it. The lyrics continue with, shadows follow me to the edge of bliss to uncover bitter demons that I've hidden. Seeking a scapegoat was my only way to shelter my face from the terrors that haunted me, to keep me thinking this was a sign that stemmed from myself to shove the world away, unable to see these choppy seas. I left from the earth and safety of my dreams. Here we come face to face with the negativity that our narrator is dealing with. We hear the choices he has made that have left him with his current struggle. The journey continues with the coming of the storm. Lightning struck and my world crumbled apart. Happiness always seems so far. Nothing blocks out the voices speaking violent words, making me believe that was the edge of my world. The beginning of this verse is repeated and we then start to approach the light at the end of the tunnel. But happiness doesn't seem so far. I have to accept coming to terms. I come to terms. And how would I ever allow such a negative mind? If only you could see the world from my eyes, a place of violence with no repentance. I won't fall to my knees, no exceptions. We have finally reached the light at the end of the tunnel and are greeted by the anthemic call to arms to, once again, rise above and not accept defeat or any negativity despite how far we may fall. Giving up is giving in, no exceptions. Giving up is giving in, no exceptions. The, song is re the chorus is repeated and the song concludes with the line, I have to accept coming to terms. To me, this song is a mix of the views of a realist and an optimist. The narrator tells us that life is hard, dark, and the world is cold and violent, but we can overcome and not give in. The change starts when we come to these realizations. This is just my take on it, however. Here's a part of an interview with Morrow from Set Sites about the meaning of violent words. And that kind of uh, segues into the next song, which is Violent Words. And that is the track that follows Rise Above. And, it, and it's pretty fitting, I think. Um, there, there seems to be like a similar theme between those songs, but Violent Words seems to be like a little bit more somber and has that reflective tone to it. Uh, in your own words, what is Violent Words about? <laughs> violent Words, man. Funny enough, Violent Words is actually, I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% certain, actually, it was the first song that Set Sites wrote together as a collective of, um, of like, with the, pretty much the current lineup that we have now. Um, so it's a very special song. It's it's a lot, it's honestly, like, from my perspective, a lot darker than Rise Above. Because Rise Above is just like, you know, hey, man, you can you can get out of whatever the fuck it is going, like, you know, that whatever's going on with you, you can get out of that. Like, you just got to change, you just got to be that change you know what i mean yeah and, and violent words is more on the spectrum of like yo i have to i i can't change this like it's more of a some things are definite and absolute you know and you can't you can't really change those facts like for instance death death is a is an absolute thing you can't bring anyone back you know what i mean no matter how much you try no matter how like how many memories you scroll through in your mind, you can't bring someone back. Um, loss, death, like all these absolutes in life, that song is about dealing with that. And that's just about, like, you have to come to terms with it. You have to accept it. Like, and not not just, like, loss and death, but, like, even more, like, not, not more permanent, because what's more permanent than death? But um, <laughs> as well as, like, permanent things, just, like, depression and anxiety, which are, things that i didn't have to deal with up until i was more in my like young adult stage of life you know <laughs> and it was very very strange man i didn't understand like how to cope like where i'm from that stuff don't exist you know what i mean where i like it, where i'm from if you if you are depressed if you're anxious and you, you're like visibly showing signs of that they'll put you in like like an insane asylum and just keep you there and, like you won't get any like good treatment like how you do in america you know like it's just a song about really, really coming to terms with the worst possible things in life, man. Um, that's why I like, 
and so that's something that my grandfather taught me a lot that like because he he was a great man and he went through a, a lot man i can't tell you how much this struggle and hardship man like, i'll just give put it into perspective for you like he was the man of the house when he was seven years old okay and his pop yeah when his pop left he was taking care of his mom he was working all at seven years old he started bro like it just shows how much of a different time it was back in the in the twenties, you know what I mean? Like Oh yeah, absolutely, man. So he he really instilled in me before he passed that like no matter what life throws at you, sometimes you can't change it and you just gotta accept it and just keep going. You know? And so that's why in that in the song I say I learned a lesson from a dead man's words, I have to accept coming to terms. There is there is a definite uh, theme of acceptance, but I don't think that necessarily it's it's a bad thing. Like it's it's good to have that acceptance. Uh, that acceptance there can be um, positivity within that, you know. Absolutely, like don't get me wrong. I only say that it's darker just because it's like it's not in that positive light as rise above. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it, it is just taking. I, I guess I want to even say it's negative. It's just more like realistic, you know. Um, and and that's just like, and and you're right. Like it is a positive thing to accept those, like absolute changes, because you know even if they are detrimental, you know, like at the end of the day, whatever is gonna be is gonna be. You know what I mean? Like whatever happens happens, and it is what it is. You know, so like you have to can just continue on, man. You can't let that stuff. You can't let that kind of stuff just you know, put you in a box and keep you there for the rest of your life, you know, like, you got to be sure to, you know, get back on your feet, you fall just to get back up kind of thing, you know, and a lot of a lot of things in life are going to knock, knock us down, as I'm sure you know, and I'm sure anyone who listens to this knows. So there you have it. The music is loud. It is aggressive. Sometimes it does sound negative and can be about negative topics. As we have heard, though, there is a positive side to it all. This music can teach us about how to hold it down when things get tough and how to get back up. It can raise awareness to topics that other genres may not explore or provide insight to. This music gets people's attention. It gives someone who has been going through something a place to healthfully release the pain, anger, or sadness. It provides a community for like-minded individuals. This music can help people reflect on the things they've done, motivate them to be better, or help them accept coming to terms. This music, after all we have heard, may still not suit your tastes. You may not be running out to the store or hopping on iTunes or Spotify to get your fix, and that's okay. I hope that you have, at the very least, learned something. I hope I have opened your ears and mind to the other side of things. Maybe now you have a different perspective and a better understanding. Now you can see, or hear, that even things that seem initially negative can be positive. Thank you for listening and sharing this experience with me. This concludes our broadcast day.